What's the deal? It's your boy J Mike, Mr. Athletic Over Everything. Um, today's video is actually going to touch on a topic that a lot of people uh, overlook. Um, and it's not really their fault. It's just that people are trying to get the cost down as much as possible when creating their shirts, um, hoodies, and, and t shirts, and things of that nature. And um, I have some insight, and I can also tell you some things not to do. Um, I started my um, clothing company, AOE. Um, roughly two years ago now um, I came into the game trying to get my margins and profits to be as great as possible you know so you start asking questions about what shirts should you buy uh, what brands uh, what cut uh, what what type of shirt a foreign fitted shirt or something that's a little more uh, baggy or something that's more tailored um, it depends on your clientele but uh, over the years now, um, I've learned what works best in my niche, um, which is I'm a professional power lifter. A lot of people purchase my stuff are going to be more on the workout side. So that also not only changed the quality of shirt, but also the quality of vinyl um, that I chose to use when creating the shirts due to the fact that people are going to be working out. They're going to be on benches laying down. So you want something that's going to have a little texture so it gives a little grip when they're benching or even squatting if you have something on the back of the shirt. So these are all things that you should pay attention to when creating these shirts. But this particular video is um, I'm going to get to what happened to me when I first started. Um, I came in and was like, you know what, I'm going to have all these shirts. So I bought like 12 different color sh uh, shirts and I bought the cheapest shirts they had available. I believe it was like two dollars a shirt or something like that um, oftentimes you see a lot of content creators talk about the cost of the shirts and um, that can be very deceiving um, and and shirts and if you're selling shirts for you know ten dollars yeah you could buy a dollar shirt or a two dollar shirt but if you're trying to get twenty five thirty dollars a shirt I recommend recommend going with the best on the market or what's what's mostly a uh, industry standard for the the brands that have a higher end to them and that's kind of what I did and um you know you hear things about like Gildan being like a terrible company but all companies have tiers you know what I'm saying and Gildan is another one Gildan has like several tiers of shirts yes they ha they do make a shirt that's two dollars but they also have a shirt that's a five dollar shirt uh, or a three dollar and fifty cent shirt and depending on the size so uh, with me being a bigger guy and me having a fan base of bigger guys who want to be big and strong I have to make sure that I get shirts between you know extra small all the way up to 6x sometimes so um, I sometimes have to spend nine dollars for a blank if someone orders a, uh, a 6x shirt or something like that so you also have to t take that in consideration when you're doing your pricing but um, I, I kind of got into this and I bought all these cheap shirts and and before you figure out what shirts you want to sell you should wear the shirts you should ask uh, people who are going to be your customers what kind of shirts they prefer because what you'll find is is that you might wind up wasting money on shirts that you'll never use um, you go to the to the shirt stores or the wholesale stores and you buy all these different colors and to be perfectly honest with you um, when you're first starting out, I recommend going no more than three colors on shirts. And if I had to, to tell someone who was really starting from ground one, I would start with a black shirt. Um, if you do a design, do it in black and sell that shirt. And one of the things that people don't realize is that, you know, your first shirt is the easiest shirt to sell. Um, my first shirt was a, a shirt after I left my I had a huge sponsorship with a big company and um, I came out came out with this design shirt it was real cool I had got 50 shirts it sold out the same day right so I'm like yo everybody's rocking with the kid right and then I did another shirt and it didn't sell I didn't sell not one design of the next shirt that I did on my own when I started pressing um, the first designs but the reason is is that people would want to support you but they kind of just do it just because like oh, okay I'll buy a shirt but then when they see that you're really trying to do this you actually have to go another step um, to make sure that you can get them to buy it 
as something that they want to be a part of um, on the daily. And that's what all these shirt brands and um, clothing companies are about. It's about association. What are you associated with? Are you associated with greatness? Are you associated with motivation? Do people, um, you know, follow you for inspiration, things of that nature? All these things play a huge factor. But when you're picking out your shirts, you should think about this. Like, do you want a shirt that you're going to be selling for ten dollars a piece, or do you want something that you can sell for twenty-five or thirty dollars a piece? And that was something I had to actually come to grips with. Now, this particular shirt here is a Gildan. Now, this was a, this is the soft. I believe this is called the the soft something shirt by Gildan. It's not their cheapest shirt. It's like an in between. It was like a three dollar and twenty-five cent, or two dollar maybe two dollars and seventy five cent a shirt and um i went in this direction so i purchased a bunch of different colors i bought like 10 in each size not knowing uh who actually purchased shirts and you know for every business you'll figure out uh who your clientele is um and i found personally that uh the most popular size is large right uh extra large is not a very popular size um, for my my customer base um, 2x 3x uh, small and large I can almost not buy mediums and extra larges and extra smalls um, and I figured this out with the first wave of shirts I bought the shirts and then I felt my shirts compared to other shirts and I'm like ah this Gildan you know and I heard the bad rep that Gildan got and then I started learning more about the shirts and you know something about this particular shirt, and you'll you'll be able to tell with the quality of shirt depending on um, where you're purchasing it, purchasing it from. There are small little details about shirts that you don't really think about, but these Gildan shirts don't have seams, right? So if it doesn't have a seam, it's not going to be tailored. Um, the the Bella canvas like this one, there's seams on both sides of the shirt those are going to be a little more tailored they're going to have a better fit to them and like i said you'll learn this throughout the process now um also if you're selling to to a lot of uh street guys or guys who wear dickies and wear oversized shirts uh you might be able to get away with the the guild and regular style shirts but if you're somebody who's trying to more fashion forward or have a more higher end appeal there's also another Gildan that you guys can get get away with, and that is the, the Gildan uh, Tri-Blend. Now, this particular shirt, it actually, it's a thick, it's a heavier gauge shirt, and it it's a better constructed shirt, especially the bigger guys like these particular shirts. But these shirts cost just as much as the Bella Canvas shirts. This right here is a Bella, Bella Canvas shirt, um, but these cost just as much because as you go up in the sizes, the sizes jump dramatically. Now, um, this particular shirt, uh, the tri-blend goes up to a 3X at the place where I get my shirts from. And a 3X costs, I believe, $8.50 versus uh, the $8 shirt in Bella Canvas would be uh, 5X. So the, there are levels in all these different companies. So just because it's, it's uh, Gildan doesn't make it a bad quality shirt. They do make better quality shirts. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I'd love... Actually, the 3X is $6.25, so it is a lot cheaper. Um, I love these particular shirts. Um, they have a great feel to them. And just learn this stuff, right? So I'm going to give you guys a little, um, little situation that actually happened to me when I first decided to switch over. I had originally had purchased... <sighs> probably 60 of these Gildan soft uh, I can't think of the name of the shirt but I bought a bunch of different colors pinks blues purples yellows greens all this stuff without knowing the designs that I was actually going to do uh, when I first started out I should have been buying black and white shirts and maybe uh, red you know what I'm saying and I spent all this money and I started seeing that no one was buying certain color shirts. I had bought a bunch of gray shirts. I love gray shirts, but I didn't realize that women weren't going to buy gray shirts and a lot of guys weren't going to buy gray shirts. And then you start realizing um, most people, they wear the same clothes to the gym over and over again. So they need wearability. So if it's dirty or has a stain on it, you can't 
constantly wear those um, kind of shirts because it's going to show up. Women aren't going to be more, women are going to be less prone to want to wear gray because they, when you start sweating, it looks nasty. So a lot of women try to stay away from gray shirts. I had to learn that the hard way. So I had a bunch of shirts that I couldn't even sell. Um, I wound up giving them away to the homeless. And um, that's when I realized where I wanted to go in terms of the type of shirts. So I went from the tri-blend shirts to the Bella canvas shirt, which are these. I like the tri-blend shirts now because you have to make a design that's specifically for that fit. If you're going to make something that's a little more baggy, I go with the tri-blend shirt all day over any Bella canvas shirt or anyone else's. But if you're going to make something that's going to be more for the guy who wants to be flexed out in the gym, the Bella canvases are more form-fitting. So you have to know the design, but that was before I was thinking like that. I had ideas, but they weren't thought out and planned. Now, if I'm making a shirt and it's going to have a very specific reason, like, hey, this is going to be uh, an oversized gym shirt, I'm not going to make an oversized Bella canvas because it's not, it's not, it doesn't work. But that um, tri blend shirt by uh, Gildan actually works pretty well with that mindset um, in tow. Um, I bought a crap load of Bella can. I bought all these different colors, right? And then that's when it hit me. Most people are going to only buy a certain color. They might buy red. You might be able to sell a navy and white. You might be able to sell a red. You might be able to sell a, a black. But pink and orange and fuchsia and all these different colors, save your money. Uh, start off with black, white, red, and maybe blue. Those are the colors that, the only colors I'll buy, especially if you're just getting started. And what I would do is I would wait until you sold let's say 20 of a certain design before you move on to something else and just keep trying to put them out because you're going to wind up just burning money. Um, and the one good thing about being the talent that creates the, the garments, you can actually come up with something in your head, put it on a shirt, and then you can wear it and try it out. And you don't have no minimums and things of that nature. So um, that was something that the first when I first started, I had went through a print company and the guy kind of messed up the shirt and then didn't want to fix it so I was like you know what I'll do it myself so now I'm able to do trial runs with something so if I have a shirt color that I'm not too sure about or a color combination I'll just make it in my size and then wear it and see how it performs and that has been working very very well like I said this video is maybe a little bit over all over the place but I think that it is very helpful I wish I would have had more of this when I first started uh, and the thing about the color shirts um, I was with a huge company and they were like multi-million dollar company and um, I was coming to them like yo man all y'all shirts are black you know what I'm saying you need to make some different color shirts like a blue a, a red and he says Jason no one buys those other color shirts we have marketing data that says 86% uh, of the customers are buying black shirts and I kept saying why would someone buy a black shirt over and over again and then he started telling me that people wanted to have the wearability if the shirt was stained um, you wouldn't be able to see it because of the color of the shirt and then also most people uh, want to match up their their uh, workout stuff with what they're wearing to the gym and a lot of times the stuff is black so once I started taking this information in I started uh, not wasting as much money. You know, I have a couple of designs that are my core designs, and I know that I'm always going to need black shirts. Um, I'm always going to have a use for a red shirt in my company's uh, color schemes and things of that nature. So um, I hope this video actually helps you guys. Um, I want to put out more and more content because I've, I've done a pretty good job so far in my first couple of years but there are a bunch of times where I wasted a bunch of money especially on shirts and that's something that you don't want to do I waste money on shirts and waste money on vinyl that you're not going to use so um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video until next time AOE oh one last thing um, if you guys want to follow my journey you can follow me on Mr. Athletic over everything on Instagram you can follow my powerlifting, my sports car collection, and all that stuff there, as well as on YouTube. Um, and my website is athleticovereverything.com. And if you guys are over there, 
I appreciate you. All right, guys. Later.